Welcome back, mathematicians. It's Professor Pandemic here for a very important fractions lesson on simplest form. Now, while simplest form may appear to look simple in its name, it's anything but. It's something that students, especially starting out with fractions, have the greatest time remembering and actually doing with their answers. Because almost every answer needs to be put in simplest form. And if you don't put it in simplest form, you're never going to get full credit. So let's go into what simplest form is and how to do it. So I have a fraction 12 over 8. The first thing I have to do is I have to figure out all the factors of those numbers before I can figure out simplest form. So I have to figure out all the ways I can multiply and get 12. Well, uh, I can multiply 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. All those get me 12. I can multiply 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. You don't have to do this once you start getting better at simplest form, but starting out, writing down all these factors is going to help you come up with what is called the greatest common factor, or abbreviated GCF. The greatest common factor is the number both the numerator and denominator have in common, because we're going to use that for our division. Now when we go through, we see that they have 2 in common and 3 in common. Now if you use those numbers, what you're going to end up with is something called an equivalent fraction, 4, 6, and 6 ninths. Equivalent. This means the fractions are equal to 12 over 18. 4, 6, and 6 ninths are equivalent fractions to 12 over 18. But we're not looking for equivalent here. We're looking for the simplest version of the fraction, which is why we have to find the biggest number they have in common. A lot of times, students will find this first number, and they'll go, I've got it. They'll divide, and oops, we have the wrong answer. So definitely look for that biggest number, which is 6 for both of these. So then you take the numerator and denominator, and you divide them both by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. We get 2 thirds. 2 thirds is also an equivalent fraction but it's also the smallest fraction we can make. What this means is these numbers now have nothing other in common with each other than one. So if we go through this, the factors of two are one times two. Here it's one times three. Notice the only factor they have in common is one. That's the only factor that you can have in common to be in simplest form. If one of these fractions had a 2 or a 3, like down here in this one, both of these can be divided by 3. That means it's an equivalent fraction. We can go deeper. Notice 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So if you keep going, even with these fractions, this one you divide by 2, you're always going to end up with 2 thirds. It's the smallest version of the fraction, meaning it's in simplest form. And all fractions when you're given an answer, unless specifically stated not to, need to be in simplest form. I know that was a lot of information. So if you want to pause this video and listen to it and watch the introduction a couple more times so you can kind of work your way through it, that's fine. Otherwise, let's go look at some examples on how to solve and find simplest form. All right, friends, for the first two problems, we're just going to do one at a time, and then after that, I'm going to give you a couple to do all at once. So let's start with 8 tenths. Put this fraction in simplest form. Hopefully, friends, you ended up with an answer of 4 fifths. So when I went through all my factors of 8, I ended up with 1, 2, 4, and 8. All the factors of 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 5. Knowing the factors of a number, knowing what multiplies by each other, is really going to help you with simplest form. The better you know your multiplication facts again, in and out, notice knowing multiplication facts is a big thing that keeps coming up over and over again all year in these videos, will help you with this. So then, we divide 8 divided by 2, which is 4, 10 divided by 2, which is 5, 4 fifths. A couple things to mention now. 
Anytime you see two even numbers, you can always divide by two. Two can always go into anything. So if you have no idea what to do, you can always divide, keep dividing by two until the even numbers disappear. Not always gonna work, especially if you have odd or an even and odd, but that's a good place to start here. The other thing you should notice here, if the numerator is one less than the denominator, you always know you're in simplest form. So four is one less than five. Six is one less than seven. 10 is one less than 11. 1,119 is one less than 1,120. It doesn't matter how big the number is, as long as you remember, if your numerator is one less, you're automatically in simplest form. It's a good thing to remember. The other thing to remember to know if you're always in simplest form, if you have a one in your numerator, if the one is your numerator, always in simplest form. So two things to kind of help you there, reminding you and maybe helping about knowing when you're in simplest form and not having to do all this work. Let's do another. All right, mathematicians, hopefully you came up with an answer of three fifths. The greatest common factor of both of these numbers was four. See, it's even number, but we can find a number bigger than two. So if you use two here, wasn't the greatest common factor. It's a factor, but not the greatest common factor. Remember, you're always looking for that greatest common factor. Dividing both of the top and bottom, or numerator and denominator by four, and we get three over five. So, we're gonna do a couple more problems. Let's keep going. All right, friends, I've added two more problems here. For these problems, I'm only going to write down what the greatest common factor is, so that way um, it takes up a little more less space on the whiteboard. If you need to do that work, pause the video and take your time just like always. Do all the steps, because the, again, the goal is to get the right answer. So see if you can come up with these two answers and put them in simplest form. Hopefully you came up with five sevenths for the top problem and two thirds for the bottom problem. The greatest common factor was three in the first problem. Second problem was five. So again, knowing your multiplication facts, being able to figure out the greatest common factor really is the trickiest part of this. As you get better, this becomes quicker. Also, you might be able to start memorizing some of these because 10 15 is always going to be two thirds. So if you start using fractions a lot and you're doing them over and over again, you might start seeing fractions and go, oh, I know the simplest form to that without even having to do the work, which is fine. Just make sure you're sure that that's the answer. If you keep having to do the work, keep doing the work. It'll eventually come. It might come quicker for some than others. Don't get discouraged. Just keep working hard and doing your best and you'll get there. I have four more problems to do on the next board. Let's get to the last problems of the day. All right, mathematicians, this is our last four problems of a video today. We have four sixteenths, nine over 18, six over 14, and three ninths. Pause the video and get all four answers in simplest form before we move on. How many did you get right, friends? Let's find out. For the first one, the greatest common factor was four, and we divide, we ended up with one fourth. For our second problem, the greatest common factor they both had in common was nine. So when we divided, we ended up with one half. For our third problem, the greatest common factor they had in common was two. And when we divided, we ended up with three sevenths. And for our last problem, the greatest common factor they both had in common was three, and we ended up with one third. Hopefully, you got at least three of these problems right, and this friends, concludes our lesson on simplest form. Again, the more you do, the easier it gets, but it can be tricky if you're not sure how to come up with those greatest common factors and know your multiplication facts. So again, practice your facts if you're having trouble, or continue to do extra problems either in your math class or find some online. As for me, I'm Professor Pandemic. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and the more you learn, the more you know. We'll see you at the next video. Have a great day, friends.